Hey guys, this is the episode number five of the New Life Vision series. Uh, this episode is about the New Life ecosystem, so I will give you an overview of how the technology articulates with the uh, different users and participants. Uh, you will see it's an entire ecosystem, it's not just the mobile app, so I will uh, go uh, uh, into that. And before we start, I would like to uh, uh, set things into a wider frame, which is what we have been discussing before. Uh, if you didn't start from the episode one, I recommend you to do so. If not, I will still uh, give a little reminder of all the different things that we have discussed before so that we can start with the right uh, context in mind. So the first episode was about the creative uh, life, which is how we are shifting from labor industrialism to a more creative uh, type of economy and the importance of uh, creating uh, because of uh, AI, machines, postmodernity, and uh, the rise of the internet. The second episode was about uh, ecosystems and decentralized communities as opposed to other type of organizations. So this is very important to watch it to um, uh, get a better experience of this current episode. And uh, the third one was uh, about the creative industries lagging and why the, the current um, state of the art of how creative industries are being run is not fostering the uh, economic incentives to people who are actually innovating and who are ahead of the curve in, in terms of cultural production. And uh, the episode just before this one was about collective curatorial creativity, which is this idea that uh, an act of creation is the result of a collective effort from people who were living before you, from people around you, from uh, references, from the audience and how you interact with contents, with algorithm. And the result of all of that produces culture, which is where creativity thrives. So uh, now that we have uh, looked at uh, those different uh, episodes, we can start digging into the New Life platform and the New Life ecosystem. So let's start simple. Uh, first, I would like to um, summarize what are the different forms of values that are being added by creators on the New Life platform. Uh, and uh, those are create creation. So when you create content, when you create nodes, when you post uh, photos, videos of something that you have produced, uh, it's one part of the story, which is very important. Then there is a second part of the story, which is obviously curation. So both actually are forms of creativity, right? Uh, when you produce uh, content, it has value because other people have created it and, and created it within the context of an entire spectrum that uh, is contributing to the value of the uh, unit of, of creation. And then there is the third part, which is the networking part, which is, okay, fine, you have uh, great uh, content, great um, uh, curation, uh, but you need to get people to have a look at this and to uh, participate in, in different ways, either as a uh, consumer or as a fan or uh, as a co-creator. You need to attract people around what you are producing. And so uh, those three types of uh, action are being uh, rewarded by the New Life platform. So creation is when you upload a node and you are um, uh, being paid with more. So if the content that you create is uh, valuable, you get more exposure. If uh, you are good at curating, you get more nodes. And we'll talk about what nodes are. And then if you are uh, good at networking, you get revenue because you are actually bringing in economic activity into the platform so that everyone here is going to thrive. So that's the three main behaviors in terms of features. The, obviously, the creation is when you upload a node. 
So that's the three kinds of behavior. Uh, this one, creation, is when you upload a node. The second one is curation, when you are voting on the platform. And the third one is networking, when you invite users into the platform with your invite link. So uh, you have a, a menu on the app where you can invite and you get a list of all the people who are joining the app through your invite link. And all those uh, forms of value added are being recorded by the algorithm and you are getting different forms of rewards. Those ones are the basic ones, but then based on uh, the whole history of your contribution to the platform, you can access other levels where you get uh, much um, much more value uh, in the form of uh, digital assets and uh, revenue and so on. So now let's get into uh, the actual New Life uh, ecosystem and how it works. So what you might know from New Life is the mobile app, which is one part of the story. So on the mobile app you can do those three things that uh, we just uh, discussed, so you can uh, vote for content, you press and hold based on how much you like what you see and you are getting rewards for uh, providing uh, good curatorial inputs into uh, the community. Um, and then this app is actually tied to uh, a bigger uh, system which we call the new graph. So the app is obviously new life.ai. It also has a desktop version that is coming soon. And uh, new graph is where all the data is going. So when you vote for a specific node or when you upload a node or when you invite someone, they get recorded into this graph database. So, what is a graph database? Um, very simple explanation. I will not be very. I, I will not be technical here. When you uh, store data into a database, uh, let's take Excel. When you have an Excel table, you have different data, and this data has relationships based on uh, how they are organized. So. There is uh, the vertical order, there is the horizontal order, then you can do formulas from one to another. And all those um, cells are organized linearly, like uh, mathematics, like those type of, of thinking. Uh, graph database is a bit heavier, it's a bit... Um, it's different, I will not say smarter or I will not say... Uh, it's just different. What it does is it understands the association between concepts and their relations. So we can compare it to the different parts of the brain. Um, when, you, uh, when you look at the human brain and the human cognition, you have actually three main part, parts. You have uh, the first part, which is the reptilian brain, which is this part, let's say, uh, which manages your, the, the functions that are uh, extremely, um, uh, let's say, uh, basic to your life. Uh, for example, breathing, your heartbeat, uh, when you walk, when you avoid a projectile, or when you have this, like, you know, someone throwing something at you and you don't even think about it, or when you juggle, when you swim, all those um, uh, type of, uh, of movements. Uh, are being analyzed at a very deep level of your brain and that's your rept what we call your reptilian brain. And then you have the uh, frontal lobe, which is this tiny piece at the top of your brain, uh, in, in, in the front, which is actually uh, responsible for reasoning. So we were talking about modernity and the age of reason and how you know, people can perform calculations and think in terms of concepts and abstractions uh, and uh, which kind of makes us different from uh, animals. It's uh, this part of the brain that is responsible for that. And then there is this massive portion of the brain which is where we have stored all the associations. And so associations mean uh, things such as if I put my hand on the fire, it burns. 
and I don't even need to like, I, I just need to learn it once. I create this connection, fire, burn. And it's somewhere in my mind and because I have high emotions attached to it, the connection here is very strong. And so you experience life, you go through different um, situations where you are exposed to some emotions and those emotions will uh, stay in your memory and next time you will be exposed to similar um, uh, representations or similar objects in your life, uh, abstract or concrete, you will have the same uh, automatism, you will have the same uh, dopamine or fear or anger or uh, all those uh, things. So trauma, for example, is happening here. When you are traumatized by something, it means that you have gone through an experience and when you meet an experience that looks similar, it triggers very bad emotions. Uh, but also the opposite, uh, dopamine, for example, when you, uh, uh, you know that uh, you are going to go to a massive party and you're going to have a lot of fun, your brain is creating this positive hormone because you have already been before at a party and you kind of know what, uh, how fun it can be and you get into this mood. And so this is what this associative brain is in charge of uh, mainly. So when you look at culture, what's, uh, what's actually happening in the cultural mind is this accumulation of connections and of associations between concepts. So you are not only associating your uh, concepts with emotions, you are also associating concepts with other concepts. So if I say, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, Westworld, you will think, uh, you know the show Westworld, you will think about uh, cowboys and robots and piano and this, uh, I don't know, amusement park and you will have a lot of things that will come to your mind without it being actually uh, relevant or uh, linear or mathematical. It's just the way you feel, the way things are connected inside your mind. It's your imaginary. Uh, as opposed to the linear thinking that we were looking at before, there is no emotion attached. It's like one plus one equals two and no matter how you feel about it, one, e one plus one equals still two. If I have those two pens, I have two pens. One plus one equals two. There is no other uh, interpretation to it. But if I say this is the best color in the world, purple is the best color in the world, it is subjective. It's my emotion. It's how I relate emotionally to this. So uh, people talk about objective, subjective. Uh, let's, let's keep it simple. I will say linear and associative. And so when you uh, live your life, you see a lot of things, so in nature, in the city, whatever, and you have uh, emotions attached to them. An emotion of pleasure, an emotion of uh, danger. If you see, I don't know, uh, an apple, and last time you, you had an apple, you really loved it, uh, you will feel good about catching an apple on a tree. If you uh, have a bad experience with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a uh, wolf has bitten your foot, you know, in the, uh, in, the, in the forest. Next time you will see a wolf, you will kind of freak out. And uh, actually, I would, I would recommend uh, a very fun video, uh, or it's, it's a meme actually on, on YouTube. Uh, try to Google or to, to, to type on YouTube, uh, cats and concumber. So what happens when uh, cats are uh, put next to a concumber, when they see it, for some reason that is very hard to explain, they freak out and they jump and they have this like hyper, you know, reaction that comes from probably the reptilian brain where um, it's very difficult to know why because most of them never seen, have never seen anything like a cucumber before. So there are some theories that cats would have actually memorized some traumas from their ancestors who have been attacked by snakes, which kind of have the same shape. It's a long green uh, object. So you have those videos of cats like eating and their uh, owners putting this concumber behind them and they see them and they freak out. And so we have this in probably our genetics, uh, it's hard to tell, but for sure according to the experiences we had through movies, through real life, through all kinds of, of experiences, we have created those interconnections in our mind. So this is associative thinking. 
And so the way we are building this new graph database is very similar to that. So as opposed to you know, social networks or search engines that are uh, mostly based on other types of, uh, of uh, they value different things. So take a search engine, what it does is if you type uh, real estate, it will give you the most popular or the most important or the biggest real estate website. They don't care about your taste. They don't understand that you don't like brick buildings because you associate it with something that's lame or whatever and you don't like it. Uh, they will not know any, any, anything like that. They will just know that this is the biggest. This is the most important real estate website. Um, look at social networks. Uh, their key metric is engagement. And the goal is let's put in front of people the content that drives the highest amount of shares, of comments, of uh, all those things. Therefore, those contents are designed to trigger your emotions and they are designed to go viral and to make people stay a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer on their platforms. And so that's uh, the algorithms of social networks. The algorithm of new life, the new graph, is very different from that in the sense that our priority and what we look at is the cultural connections and it's the associations between different concepts which can be uh, colors, which can be uh, shapes, taste, culture, um, aesthetics, tribes, all those aspects of a content experience where we, um, uh, we generate uh, recommendations and we uh, understand the value of content based on how people relate to them. So all those contents are related indirectly through the inputs of all the users of the New Life platform who are uh, using the app. So when you use the app, you are giving your opinion through the deep likes on all the content, all the nodes that are inside the app. And by doing that, you help the algorithm grow and learn. The algorithm is growing every day, every hour, every time someone uses the app, the algorithm becomes smarter. Uh, the algorithm actually has a, has a cute name, it's NUV, N-U-V-I. And this uh, NUV is trying to learn and trying to understand as an extension of the brain, so in the same way as this part of the brain that we're uh, talking about, it's built kind of in the same way, which is it doesn't need to make sense, it doesn't matter if it drives engagement, it doesn't matter if it's viral, it doesn't matter uh, if the whole mass of people like it. What matters is that users with very high AQ, uh, which means good taste, uh, are going to um, value and how they associate it to other things that they value. So, to simplify a bit how the, the algorithm works, you have good content, let's say, you have relevant content, and you have uh, high AQ appreciation, appreciation. Uh, HAKA, which uh, defines the score for the content and which makes it either expand and, and get seen, get streamed to all the users of the platform or stop spreading pretty quickly or just spread to a certain amount of people. So on your life you don't have obviously, you have no followers, you have no um, uh, relation that you can capitalize on and just become this like massive influencer like we can see on, on traditional, traditional social networks. What you do is you release a certain amount of artworks, of art piece that is your, uh, your, your body of work, let's say, and it is somewhere on the app and people at any time can stumble upon it and vote and the content will navigate its way into the users without them having to follow you or to uh, have you promoting your, uh, your profile. So this is how the new graph works. I was talking about the word AQ. Uh, I will give you a quick explanation on that so we can uh, have a better understanding. So the AQ stands for Aesthetics Quotient. So AQ is different from IQ. IQ is the intelligence of uh, pattern recognition, of reason, of... Uh, so somehow aesthetic question is tied to IQ, it's not that 
separate, there is a big overlap between the two. But AQ is this form of intelligence that is about navigating those emotions and those associations between concepts. And this is a skill that has somehow been uh, considered or downplayed or downgraded, uh, underrated in the current economy because people who run the economy are very high, high IQ, high uh, rational thinkers. We talked about industrialism and the age of uh, modernity. And so modernists are uh, the ones that are the closest from the source of fund, from the uh, financial institutions. And so they need a lot of intermediaries to make the money flow to the uh, creative and the very high AQ people. And on top of it, uh, we don't have the right instruments to identify high AQ people around the world. So if you look at uh, software development, for example, and engineering, you have um, ecosystems and platforms such as uh, open source, GitHub, uh, uh, certification programs, you have a lot of instruments that are used by uh, tech ecosystems to identify great talents around the world because it's uh, designed for that. So if you are born in Afghanistan and you are very, very good at writing AI algorithms or uh, something that, that has value, you will be identified very quickly through the means of, um, of uh, detection of talent that has been deployed across the, uh, the sector. And then you have uh, investors, you have tech giants, and all those people are willing to take people from anywhere in the world and to bring them either uh, into a position in their own country. Uh, I know a lot of great uh, people who are in, in parts of the world like India, Pakistan, who are very good at uh, mathematics and programming. Uh, or they either, even travel into the Silicon Valley and those places where they can have very high, highly paid uh, jobs. When it comes to uh, fashion, which uh, is uh, one form of this AQ uh, people, what happens is you need to have parents who can fund your trip into those main cities like uh, London, Paris, New York and so on. And then you need to hang out with those people, you need to have a flat there, life is extremely expensive, then you need to attend those expensive schools, and once you have access to all of it, then you can be measured on your AQ. So first you put on the table like a bunch of grants, like tens of thousands of dollars. And once you have done that, you can be evaluated for your AQ, for your skill at understanding aesthetics, codes, uh, associations, colors, all the stuff. What we are trying to achieve here with New Life is to create a technology that can identify anyone in the world who will start by downloading the app, pressing the screen, and behave according to patterns that are recognized by the algorithm as high AQ. And so if we can do that, and if we can uh, generate an economic incentive for those people, it means that we are uh, tapping into so much potential that comes from parts of the world that are not uh, today connected to the fashion and the, or the art or the uh, creative ecosystems. And so if we can do that, and if we can do it in a decentralized way, in a flexible way, with all those people being free, you can use the app for five minutes and then leave it for a year and come back, or you can spend 10 hours per day every day on it. Uh, it's, uh, it's an opportunity engine where you, can, you are completely free to use it when you want and so on. Uh, this model, because of the biggest pool of potential talent, because of the diversity, because of uh, all those aspects, is, uh, in my opinion, much more likely to, to create uh, an environment where the output will be superior to what's happening here in those very close environments, which are in very specific privileged cities, parts of the world where the amount of people who can access those places and the gatekeepers and, and all of that are exclusive, are closing doors, are making it very hard to penetrate. Uh, this approach is likely to eat completely the economy from, uh, from those ones. And that's what we, we believe in in the long term. 
So now you have a, a general understanding of the graph, uh, how it works, and now we are going to talk about a specific level on the graph, which is the oracles. So oracles are users from the New Life app that have been identified for high AQ and high uh, contribution output, and they will be um, uh, trained in order to have uh, more impact on the algorithm. So the algorithm here at NewV is, is, is still a baby, it's still learning, it's still trying to have this intelligence where uh, it, it's able to understand, identify, value, uh, control output, which is a very big challenge technologically. But technology is not everything. We, we still need uh, human. So you have all the humans here who are growing with different uh, level of, of power. Uh, the power is very important because it defines the skill. We don't want to have the content that's pleasing the biggest amount of people. We don't want this like situation where uh, viral content is taking all the views. We want beautiful content that to take all the view and this definition of beauty is uh, uh, requiring again this very high IQ people to uh, participate in the assessment of the value of this content. So people are posting their nodes, the oracles are helping the algorithms getting the algorithm getting smarter, and all users are contributing to making the algorithm getting smarter. So what can we do with this algorithm? What's the, what's the value of this algorithm? So obviously for all the people who are using it, it's a great way to connect and to get a sense of what's currently relevant, where uh, the trends are going and to be in tune with this like uh, collective consciousness of culture and aesthetics and so this is great value this is um, uh, today happening in many many places in in the uh, media landscape such as social media magazines uh, schools um, all kinds of uh, organizations are trying to sort out this kind of zeitgeist of the moment of like what is cool now and this platform is going to be part of this uh, conversation and we will have obviously organizations, academia and all those uh, traditional, let's say, forms of uh, cultural enablers who are going to have an incentive to plug in their um, capabilities into this ecosystem and to add more nodes and more connections between those nodes. So the graph builds up, it gets more intelligent, the algorithm which is uh, reviewing and, and analyzing and learning from all those outputs is becoming more intelligent. And then at some point we will have enough data to uh, start another part of the ecosystem which we are working on currently and it's the AI ecosystem. So we are partnering with AI startups and they are building different things with the data from your life. And the goal is to reveal the value of this data through different forms of intelligence that will be derivated from that one. And so um, before we get into those, those different use cases, Let's talk about privacy because we talk about data, people are pouring a lot of data into the platform and then some AI startups are using this data. So how do we deal with privacy because it's very important. Uh, when you look at advertising platforms, which is where most of the AI today is um, uh, mobilized, AI is mobilizing into profiling people in order to put them in front of them the right message so that they buy stuff. Uh, it has a couple of challenges. The first one is that you cannot really predict what people want to buy, so you can only uh, produ produce first and then push advertising until they end up buying. But because people overproduce, uh, it creates a lot of waste. The second thing is that it's a challenge for privacy because if you are uh, targeting people with ads, it means each individual here, you need to actually know who they are. So you need to know that that person is Jack. And in order to retrieve, like when, whenever you have an advertisement, to put it in front of Jack, because Jack is a very unique profile, it's a unique person. 
with uh, the new graph, with new life, and all the data we are collecting from the um, from the app, we actually don't care about who is that person. That person is x j six seven two o forty one. So we have a hash for each user. So obviously the content uh, is attached to your profile because it's public information. You post something publicly to the world. It's kind of obvious that you want people to know that it's you. Uh, but all the data related to voting, your behavior, your location, all those stuff, which are very useful for the graph, are attached to a kind of proxy account, which has a string of character and is then aggregated into uh, a pre-treatment of data that is designed to understand the pattern of taste but doesn't care about who has given this uh, input. So we have all this anonymized aggregated data that feeds this intelligence. The intelligence is going smarter, the people are uh, feeding more data and the answers are smarter and the questions are smarter and this whole thing is growing and, and the value is um, increasing every day. And then we have the uh, AI ecosystem of startups that are building some very edgy technologies with specific goals. So I will give you one example. We have one startup that is working towards creating some uh, scouting platform so that they can identify talents and allow brands and companies and uh, all the participants in the ecosystem, magazine and so on, to uh, identify people they want to work with not based on who is the most famous or who has the most followers, but who is the most relevant with a specific uh, project or with a specific mood that they are trying to achieve. So this will create a much more dynamic uh, approach to the, to the fashion, art and uh, the creative ecosystem. And it will allow all those people who participate here to be more likely to be chosen for um, different project, paid project, not paid project, uh, whatever, but it will create a much more dynamic and much more relevant form of interaction and, uh, and discovery of talent. Another use case is generative design for uh, sustainability. So here the idea is uh, what I was saying a bit earlier, which is that most brands today have a bit lag, a bit of lag, uh, in terms of what is cool now, what is trendy now, and what they know is trendy. So they produce too much, and uh, according to the United Nations, every year there is $500 billion of fashion that is being wasted, that is not bought. And uh, this fashion is uh, either buried or burned uh, in uh, landfills. And this is a lot of waste, it's uh, very harmful for the planet, obviously, and it's a big waste economically that could be uh, re-injected into some much better uh, purpose. So we are creating a technology that can uh, produce products that don't exist, where all the participants in the new life platform will be able to give their opinion. And instead of waiting for a product to be on the retail and to go back to the factory and to be burned, it will be actually not produced. So the products that wouldn't sell would be not produced and the, people, uh, and the products that would be sold would be produced. And so what happens when all those people are taking economic advantage of this data is that uh, we will make sure that they give us uh, some of it and the money that is going to flow here, and I'm talking potentially in the future, it could be actually billions of dollars. Uh, is going to flow back to the ecosystem and then the algorithm which has a history of who contributed to this general uh, intelligence uh, has contributed uh, so if you have an account and you have accumulated a history of interactions with nodes and with the, the overall platform you will have a certain ratio of the entire value of this platform and you will get uh, a fraction of this revenue uh, most of it will go back to the uh, to the community, almost 100% of the revenue from data li licensing will go back to the community. Which means that uh, if you are, let's say, in, uh, in Mexico, in Philippines, or in those parts of the world that are not tied to the fashion industry, uh, or who don't have the same access, let's say, to the fashion weeks and uh, the places where all the money is flowing currently, you can simply download the app, start participating, gain some uh, traction according to the uh, algorithm 
and then one day a uh, brand is going to buy uh, data and insights from the community and you can start making 20, 50, 200, 600, whatever uh, dollars per month uh, based on the output of your uh, aesthetics intelligence contributed to this, uh, to this data set. So that's a big part of the, of the ecosystem. Another part of the ecosystem is going to be um, so we talked about the uh, AI startups, we talked about the app, the oracles, and then there is the project 8000. So the 8000 is uh, something that we are going to release uh, pretty soon. It's a list, it's a ranking, it's a, a, a representation of who is adding the most value into contemporary culture. So all the people in the world who are inside or outside of New Life are going to be added by oracles into a data set and people are going to vote for them. So we'll have nodes which are pages as opposed to uh, nodes that are pictures and videos. So those pages will be about people who are uh, contributing to culture. And the goal is to ask the opinion of the whole community, uh, who do you think is the most uh, let's say uh, influential in contemporary culture and so those people are going to be uh, to receive a certain score that will be outside and the goal here is to avoid having this situation where new life takes a monopoly over the revenue and does kind of what we uh, try to uh, alleviate which is that at the end very little amount of people will take over the uh, the whole value from the from the control uh, economy in the world so here the goal is to allow people outside of the platform to earn and to receive some of the rewards because they also contribute to the value that is being produced here. Um, and finally, the last part uh, I wanted to introduce today within the ecosystem. So we talked about the 8000, the oracles, uh, the app obviously, and the last part is the governance. So governance is a very long term aspect of the platform, but think about new life, think about this entire ecosystem as a decentralized autonomous community in the sense that eventually this will go from our server to be released into the public domain. And so New Life will be owned by the community. So we will be one of those nodes. So this will be us, our company, uh, let's say uh, New Life. We will become one of the organizations around this, uh, this ecosystem. And you will have a portal where people will be elected by the community based on the quota of digital uh, assets you have of the platform in order to govern and to take major decision, dec decisions related to uh, how the algorithm should work, how much money should be redistributed to whom and when and how, and all those big questions. And the whole community, based on how many nodes and how many assets they own in the ecosystem, will have a certain power over the platform, over the people who are uh, elected. So think of uh, like a board or the, the Congress, for example. So the Congress represents people. You will be able to vote for people who will represent you and make sure that your interests are being protected by the way the code is running. And then you will have uh, obviously some uh, computing pa platform, some distributed compu computing platform, which will work with the technology from the Telos blockchain which is a network of computers that are connected to run some open source uh, technology as opposed to having just one server or one cloud serving the pages or serving the content. Uh, th there will be thousands of machines that will compete to participate in running this uh, decentralized computing platform. And so owning those nodes and owning those digital assets will give you the right to decide how this is running basically. So that's the governance part. We will introduce it very slowly and the goal is by one year, two years, three years to let completely the platform into the hands of the community and to withdraw and to be just part of the ecosystem like, uh, like anyone else. 
So this is uh, absolutely everything I wanted to discuss now. Uh, a lot is happening and a lot of new forms of monetizations are going to be uh, introduced. The one that we won't introduce is advertising because we believe that it's an outdated model. Uh, we prefer much more a model where brands can learn and produce stuff that people like and to have cultural producers influencing the way uh, products are being made instead of the opposite, which is what we have today, which is that people are selling their soul to industrialists and to brands uh, and uh, to uh, force feed products that people don't like by making them sexy with content. What we want here is to do the opposite of that. So it's like you uh, create content, they listen through some AI uh, platforms what is cool, they pay everyone, the money is flowing, and then the money is redistributed transparently, uh, everything recorded on a public blockchain, with everyone uh, taking their rewards for having contributed to the ecosystem. So this is the vision about the ecosystem. The next episodes are going to be um, about the uh, creative coordination aspect. So we go back to something a little bit more uh, philosophical and creative. And then uh, we will talk about the actual roadmap, so what are the different steps and when we are planning to launch and to build up all those things. And, uh, and at the end I will give uh, maybe a little conclusion, a little like summary of the whole uh, presentation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, I hope it was clear. Feel free to ask questions in the comments section. And uh, thank you so much for attending and see you soon.